It's just about that my mission is to change that financial trajectory of one family at a time, a curated experience, one family at a time, and thousands more to go. Hey, fellow savvy real estate investors. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We have Math B. Jane on our show today. And she is from the United States. She is from Austin, Texas. She has uh, graciously joined us today. And we are really excited to talk to her because, uh, first of all, I will say from a biased perspective that she is a woman. And I'm very excited <laughs> to have a female real estate investor joining us today. I hope that through these female guests, I, we are able to continue to ex- inspire other women to think bigger because let's be real. Most of our guests are male and most of this industry is dominated by men. So it is very, very cool to have another woman joining us today. And um, I'll tell you a little bit about Mathvi before she introduces herself. She is um, the president and the wealth strategist at Think Outside the Stocks, which is a very fitting name for what she does. Uh, She uh, allows uh, and educates other people on finances and how that they can strategically plan their finances, um, thinking about strategies related to infinity bank, Banking, so preserving wealth for their families. Um, she's also got a she's a fund manager where they do some interesting things, um, and we'll talk more about it. But the one that caught my attention the most was investing in ATMs. So she's our first guest who's going to speak to this, and we'll we'll get into that with her as well. Um, you know, her her mission is really just to change the financial trajectory of families um, one at a time. And I know that her plan is to impact many more people through her work. And um, yeah, we have lots of things to talk about, but I will let uh, Mathvi tell you more about herself. So Mathvi, thank you for joining us today. And, um, you know, maybe tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, your background, and really what led you into the world of real estate investing. Thank you so much, Harita, for that such a warm welcome and Jose, you too. And first of all, I love when you started, you led with uh, that woman in real estate, right? That's kind of my sweet spot because I'm very, very passionate about it, just like you are. You know, I we want to see more women doing it. And there is a, a lot coming through, but we want to see that more, more women speakers, more, more awards and stuff. So we want to, we have a long way to go. So any woman listening to this, I would highly, highly encourage that if you need any help, you don't know where to get started, get in touch with uh, Jose and Khadija, get in touch with me and get started. So thank you so much for leading with that. That's like really my sweet spot there. Uh, And thank you for welcoming me to your podcast. Uh, You know, it's a pleasure to be here uh, and to share my story. I mean, you have your struggles. I have my struggles. I think struggles is what make us. And that is my story. I say that I have a very uncommonly common story because what happens is we have a very unique story, but it's bits and pieces. We are just so much commonalities <laughs> in everybody, right? Uh, so I came to this country as a first generation immigrant. So that's uh, where my story started. Um, about 9,000 miles away from my roots. I never wanted to leave my city, by the way. <laughs> and, uh, you know, coming here, struggling through visa issues, which is really, truly struggles, right? Uh, got through uh, and, you know, one of the top five consulting. So I was having the job with the, one of an IT industry, one of the top five consulting uh, it felt like a dream, right? You know, uh, buy the house and the American dream. I had the kids here growing up. Uh, but then 2008 happened. You know, 2008 happened. Both me and my husband, um, we kind of, you know, lost our projects. And in IT world, it means that our job, we are about to lose our job. So that happened in 2008 when I was about to give birth to my uh, second child. And uh, we moved from uh, California to Austin during that time. Uh, and we restarted in Austin. Uh, what happened, uh, continuing in my job in one of the top five uh, consulting again in 2015, I had to put that screeching uh, halt to my corporate career because I have chronic conditions uh, for 15 years now. And I just couldn't work. I just couldn't go get up, get ready and go to work. Uh, that was happening. So I had to like take a complete stop. It's like, okay, I need to quit the job, focus on my health, right? myself. Uh, and that was hard because, you know, there's that six figure income coming in and there's a like a sudden drop. And I was like, oh my God, my kid, she was a middle schooler at that time. And I was uh, thinking about her education and you know that, you know, education in US is really, really expensive, especially if you want the good choices for them. Right. Uh, so I did not want 
to limit her based on what institute that she goes based on what we can afford so that was my big why to even get into real estate and 2008 what actually you know a really punch in a gut for us when it comes to real estate so i was very afraid we were very afraid as a family to go into real estate but i still thought you know okay let's do this kind of a reverse order uh, went to the uh, real estate the rental portfolio the airbnb i, I know you did a short term rentals too uh, so i did that but with my help with my husband's commitment that was not really working out and that was not scalable and uh, trust me we had tremendous tremendous uh, uh, problems with the tenants uh, it the toilet the toilet trash and tenants we saw all that problems right uh, so i was looking for scalability and that's when i came across the multi family investing and not just that syndication that came as an aha moment for me in, the, in during that period the infinity banking strategy also came in uh, you know around the same time and i'm i'm looking at these two strategies and i'm thinking so you're trying to tell me that people next to me you know when maybe i'm going to the airport and sitting person sitting next to me he might be doing this strategy and i just didn't know all these years about it and more or so that my community does not know about it so finding these strategies made me really really happy but it made me really really sad at the same time it made me restless that the the it community that's working so hard that i come from the first generation immigrant community like us that we you know come from uh they just don't know these strategies and they do not have that time or effort to get involved in the circles and the kind of uh, information that i am getting into to do that right they just they're like super busy uh they, if they have one hour of extra time they might as well spend it with their family their kids yeah. right why would they go and attend all these conferences and stuff that i'm attending so that became really my drive so i started my journey as passive investor first got my feet wet uh, i don't think i was planning to be active uh, side but that truly became my passion that these things that i found and um i have never heard about and that's kind of you know the the wealthy toolbox in this country i wanted to take them out and put in front of busy professionals the community that i come from and not just that to teach them to educate them so they understand the complexity of that model they feel comfortable about investing or saving in in terms of the infinity banking and that's why i started think outside the stocks and you mentioned my mission uh, uh, earlier and that's truly my passion that's my driver i'm you know a big follower of go giver by bob berg and john david man and i just want to add massive amount of value to massive amount of people and with that is just about that my mission is to change that financial trajectory of one family at a time a curated experience one family at a time and thousands more to go that's amazing so, no that was that was wonderful i i really appreciate you sharing your story and and uh really getting into your why right and why you're doing this so yeah. for those that don't know what infinite banking means um because that is that is truly a strategy that is kind of undercover not a lot of people know about it the the yeah. wealthy has been have been using this strategy for 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 thousands of years i would say or hundreds of years at least um, <laughs> yeah, so tell us what what that strategy actually employs in a nutshell and how people can benefit from it definitely so i distinguish two different strategies right there is the infinity banking strategy and there is the syndicated real estate which is the passive income stream right yeah. uh, why do i want to look at two different strategies right because you have your investing money and you have your savings money right your savings money for the safety of it you keep it in the bank fdic insured and you think that okay it's not it's not going away i whenever i need it i have that money that's your sleep well money as i call it as in if you lose a job if your business is not performing that's a money that you're going to use to survive few of the months you know in terms of your mortgages in terms of your expenses your grocery bills etc your expense money right so the savings money sitting in the bank is actually eroding to inflation even if the bank is giving you some percentage on it it's eroding to inflation so you need to take that and i call that a lazy money and you put it into to an instrument which can compound and the compound when i say compounding that's really the eighth wonder as per albert einstein yeah you put that in a 
in a kind of a tool which is used by wealthy for generation after generation so that you are getting few of the few of the characteristic of it few of the benefits of it that's not even possible outside right so you take that money you put it in here you kind of start creating that cyclic effect that snowball effect the compounding year after year inside it's growing tax free so when you are getting interest in the banks and you're paying your in and your uh, taxes every year year in that interest it is creating that leakage so you're not doing that inside the system you have that tax free growth that's snowballing for you and plus it has many advantages you know you can create this bucket as big or as small you want based on your criteria yeah. not maybe you know the restrictions provided by 401k or 529 plan you can create as big as you want you can uh, put the money in it it grows tax free you can take it out tax free doing a leverage strategy so you know not just taking out the cash directly uh, but take, use that leverage strategy you can take it out at any age for any purpose so you can start storing money in there for say education purpose right what if your you know kids get a scholarship or something you can take that money and use it to purchase your rent, next rental real estate or a vacation home for example so there is no restriction on the purpose of it and then finally this is the strategy that is being used for years after years of, from the wealthy of, of the america right mm-hmm. uh, why are they using it because this is consistently dividend paying strategy and it is done in a very uh, specific uh, tool with using a life insurance as a yeah, as a tool but in a very specific product and very specifically structured that has to be done correctly yeah and once you have that you have that strategy you can literally use it for your investing education retirement you know creating that inflation hedge creating even the stock hedge uh, that you want uh, so that's in a nutshell about uh, the infinity banking strategy uh, you can you utilize this the biggest part about is that you can utilize the same dollar once you start the snowball at two different places it's called an and asset for a reason and it's it's about using that leverage strategy you can snowball that inside compounding you can take a leverage you can tell somebody else it's like your home equity loan that you don't you don't have to sell your home to come out of and access that equity you can go and have a home equity loan from a bank just pay them that you know interest or whatever same thing you take a leverage from somebody else you just pay interest only payments if you want to and use that for your investing so your money is growing compounding inside and you can invest the same dollar in your real estate investment in your syndication or whatever you want to so that's the power of power of that and uh, it i don't do justice when i say about it on the podcast but i have multiple educational content that i have created which shows the scenarios and the the force that this uh, this one strategy can create in that financial structure and this is what i'm talking about that changing the financial trajectory what do i mean by that right this is the two degree change when you change your your say flight path by two degrees and you are supposed to land at certain destination what happens if you change it by two degrees right your destination completely changes and that's right. what i'm trying to do no it is that's uh, such a great point because you know it's allowing you to have a another uh, different asset uh, that you're yeah. working on and leverage that asset to uh, essentially there's a book written on it becoming your own banker right yeah yeah so that's yeah and then i i have i mean in, if anybody is interested you know i have a great book uh, i'm affiliated with paradigm life uh, for this concept and uh, patrick dona who Uh, who's the founder of Paradigm Life? He has written an excellent book, "Head Seven Tells You Lose." Uh, and so, if okay. you know, anybody wants that, uh, you know, I will post my uh, the link. But it's um, uh, sure. you know, think think win win bitly dot think win bit dot ly think win win. Uh, you can you know just submit that form and uh, get that book from me. It's an audible format too, so that's a great book too. Okay. Yeah. No. Sounds absolutely. Good. So. We talk a little bit about the infinite banking side. Now, talk to us about the other side, um, the syndication side. So maybe just give our listeners a little bit of an overview of what you do um, 
maybe what led you into it and and really how you got started. Because uh, for those who are listening, many of our listeners are still in the single family space, or they've got like a small portfolio, maybe with some small multis. How did you, I think you touched on it a little bit about why you decided to do it, but you know, how did you make that leap? And, and really what has been your focus over the last while since you started? Absolutely. Great question. Uh, So here's the thing about single family. I mean, by the tax law, single family is a passive, you know, income. That's a passive uh, investment. Uh, But it is not really passive. What happens is that, you know, there is a lot of things that go behind, even just to purchase one property and put it out in market, get that right tenant in it. And if you don't find that tenant, you just takes one experience. And I had that one experience uh, uh, I had a tenant who moved out of uh, my house after you know s- some issues, uh, and just to take his stuff that he'd left behind, I had to spend five thousand dollars, and it took several rounds to you know just creating that dump. And he they were hoarders, and they left the house, and it it looked like a a dump yard, and I had to spend another fifteen thousand to just bring that house back to its glory, so I could rent it to somebody. So twenty thousand. Uh, out for a two hundred dollar cash flow per month. Can you imagine? That was the biggest yeah. hit that I have taken. So that kind of discouraged me. And not only that, it was not scalable. I mean, I have my health condition. My husband still is a consulting job, fifty sixty hours a work week. That's just not humanly possible to kind of attend those calls and kind of you know even if you have property management, they're just monitoring it. They're just gonna call you ultimately that you know there's this expenses, that expenses, stuff like that. Uh, but the good thing about the syndication from the passive investment, I think there are a few key points here. First of all, uh, you know, there's only limited amount of loans that you can go into, right? And if something happens, if 2008, for example, people who lost their real estate, rental real estate, especially, they had to take a hit on their credit, right? The credit is that golden thing that we protect so much in this country, right? Uh, what happens is when you, you know, Unfortunately, if you default on the single family rental, your credit history gets impacted. But the biggest thing about the syndication is that you're not even as a passive investor, you're not even on that loan. Your credit is not on the line. Nobody is asking you to submit your financials when you're going in as a passive income. So that's the biggest thing. And the asset protection, right? It's because it's all created in LLC. It's important that you are even in through the layers. You are not exposed. Your current liquid assets, your net worth that you have created, it's not exposed, is not exposed. And these are the two very, very important points passive and investors often tend to neglect or don't know about it, about the syndication model. And then there are other advantages, right? There is that completely passive income, hassle-free. They literally have to put that money into syndication. Uh, that's kind of the front heavy, looking at that investment, see if that's right up to their objectives, if they like that investment, if they like their partnerships that, that they're going into. But once they do that top heavy, it's literally like, you know, you don't have, they don't have to worry about it. Uh, mm. The cash flow automatically shows in the bank account. The newsletter automatically shows up. Uh, we had a property which we closed. And in two weeks, we had a fire in that building. What did we do? We took care of everything. But the passive investors, we just send them a notification, a newsletter saying that this is what happened. This is how we are working on it. And just yeah. providing them, you know, updates. So these are the few things I think, you know, apart from all the tax advantages and everything else, yeah. these are the three key things passive investors has to keep it, keep it in mind. The asset protection, not having that personally liable liable on the loans, and that completely completely passive income. Yeah, no, no, that's that's the beauty about uh, syndications, and you know, you're getting access to like institutional quality assets. While yeah. you know, being completely passive about it, uh, rather than investing in stocks uh, or uh, like public REITs, where yeah. you have no and, transparency of what's going on. And and Jose, you bring a very important aspect there, right? Uh, when we talk about leverage, there are two types of leverages that happen in here, right? The leverage means using something that you don't have, right? So here, in terms of loan, we are creating a leverage because. We're getting that, you know, 75% or 60%, whatever from the bank, the money that you don't have, you're creating a leverage. But the second important leverage that you're taking is that leverage of the syndication team, their experience, their expertise. 
imagine how much time you it will take for you to go to that level of getting that expertise you don't need to have that that institutional quality investment that you just mentioned about you're utilizing that expertise and so you're leveraging the tremendous amount yeah, of uh, you know, experience from them yeah no no that's that's a great point as well so i wanted to uh, uh, switch gears into talking about you have done a lot of uh, you started off with multifamily syndications yeah. Yeah. and then you branched off into other alternative asset classes so tell right. us about some of those and in um kind of some of the differences between multifamily versus those other alternative classes. Definitely, definitely. So uh, think outside the stocks, as I say, right? So when I say think outside the stocks and I encourage people to diversify outside of the stock, I cannot just say that, you know, okay, think outside the stocks and think multifamily. So it's like, there needs to be diversification. Of course, you can do different diversification in multifamily as well, the classes and different markets. But, you know, having the, time of the need. And uh, Kirita, you were mentioning about uh, the pivoting, right? The pivot was really, really important to look at. So what is uh, what is the problem, understanding the problem the investors currently are having? There is a trifecta right now. We are looking at, you know, really high inflation. We are looking at really high interest rates and we are looking at that fear of recession, right? So that trifecta has created so much fear in investors' mind, they're fearful. They're looking for something that can give them maybe some risk-managed returns. So they're not looking at like extra extra return. They're looking at risk-managed is the key for them. But they don't want to lose their money because the recession, last recession, you know, stock market already, they have lost so much money. They don't want to create another vehicle. So that's why the, for the lack of a good aspect and prospect, they're keeping their money in the bank accounts. And what is happening in the bank account? Well, maybe right now they're giving like a, maybe 3% or more, but with the inflation about, you know, still about 7 8%, there is that negative impact on your money. So if the bank is giving you 3%, recession is at 7 8%, there is a still negative of 5%. People don't see that. So your money is still keeping in the bank, you're eroding minus 5% every year. So we have to provide that pivot. We have to provide that different alternate options, which is recession resistant historically, which can provide them some consistency, right? And that's the reason I started looking into different asset classes. Now, when I mean different asset classes, right? As think outside the stocks, when I bring in the investment, the due diligence is really important for me. The due diligence in terms of the partnership, that's first. The due diligence in terms of the investments, that comes second, right? So yeah. one asset class at a time. Uh, so the ATM is, was, you know, the first diversification I, I proposed. And, you know, I did like, the due diligence on the operator, due diligence on the investment, and bought it into a, a fund, which is a diversified fund. And they can pick and choose where they want to invest inside that fund. Why did I look at the ATM investment? Because, you know, first of all, the operator has tremendous track record. He has like 11, 12 years track record. So that's what I'm looking at, the best in class partnership. And then this has been through the recession also, this has performed well. They have a track record of like 11, 12 years, never missed a monthly payment. So it creates a high, high cash flow, but it's not a your typical asset. It's like a laptop that it's, it's a diminishing asset. So mm -hmm. at the end of that seven year period, the asset is not gonna have any value but it is going to create a tremendous cash flow while it's doing it. So it's, you know, in, uh, you know, mid twenties is the cash flow that's there, that's creating. And that's essential for many people because some people lost their jobs. So the cash flow became important. Some uh, lost their passive cash flow coming from different syndication, for example, because the cash flow dried out for all the multiple challenges that we face. So that's the reason that I'm bringing in one asset class at a time. And the next one I'm looking at is then industrial. Uh, so, so think about it as, as your tolerance, right? As an investor, they come into my fund and they want to create three different buckets. So the industrial, for example, it's a ground up construction. So there is no cash flow during the period, but there is a, a high equity at the end, right? Mm -hmm. Then there is a multifamily or self-storage, something like that, which has the cash flow and it has an equity at the end. So it's like a balance of it, right? right. And then there is an ATM, which is really high cash flow, but there's no equity at the end. So now you're creating that plan for you by choosing the investments that you want to go in and you have your tolerance to. So that's essentially that diversification 
and creating that blended portfolio for yourself, for the investor and assisting them one investment at, the, at a time is what I'm trying to do with Think Outside the Stock, the Diversified Fund. Yeah. yeah, no, that's pretty cool. So yeah, you touched on some really interesting things there. And uh, definitely, um, I think it's brilliant because it allows an investor to understand the various benefits and the various risks of different types of strategies and understanding yeah. various different risk tolerances and various different goals between investor types and, and really catering the investment to them. So I think that right. the good thing about these types of passive investments is that, like Jose said, like when you're investing in a REIT or whatever it is, it's, it's almost like a blindfold investment. Like you're investing in this thing and there's no, yeah. there's no picking and choosing. There's no really understanding where the money's going and, and how they're allocating it. And they can recycle the money within the REIT, the REIT however they wish. They can transact within the REIT. They're doing all sorts of things, right? Whereas this yeah. still allows the investors to have a good sense of control. And like you said, it's top heavy control. So you start at the top, you really understand the fund, you understand what you're investing in, and then you sort of take a back seat as it unfolds. So yeah, I think that's a really wonderful thing. And I think that it's still, I think that the, the big thing here is that it still has an education piece and it still has some level of control and understanding for those investors, which is ultimately what everybody wants, right? I'm sure that those are the big objections you get as you pitch investors is some of yeah. these things. So maybe talk to us a little bit about that and talk to us about you know, the changing market. So we're in the same boat. Like we we're all in the same boat. Things have changed. Um, market has changed inflation, interest rates, this trifecta that you talked about and right. how has that affected investor sentiment and how have you navigated through that? Absolutely. And, and you touch on very important topic there, uh, which is very close to my heart and which is the education, right? So the education is really what I'm driven by, that, that purpose and passion behind it is the education. Right? Yeah. For me, uh, you know, creating that investment and bringing in investment investors is, is kind of, you know, the secondary. Uh, and the way I look at it is that, you know, the, every investment that I bring in, every 50,000, how does it impact one family at a time, right? But the education is so important because right now there is so much fear in the investor's mind, that trifecta that I was mentioning about. And as you can see that the lending has become so difficult. So the lenders are staying on the sidelines. The institutional money is staying on the sideline. There are about $3 trillion in US economy that's staying on the sideline in money markets account, just ready to be pounced at the next opportunity that coming in. They're just waiting for this market to settle down. So what is happening in the market, right? So what has happened is that like last couple of years, last two, three years, uh, there were these tremendous opportunities, right? When we were looking at the cap rate and the cap rate is a little bit difficult to understand uh, for passive investors, but you know, the cap rate compression, as we say it, yeah. that cap rate goes down, right? Compression means goes down and expansion means it, it goes up. We were seeing it going down. When it was going down, the property values were going up. And when it is now going up, the property values are coming down. So there's kind of an adjustment going on even in the commercial real estate environment, right? right. So people are fearful and watching on the sidelines to, just to see what's going to happen. A lot of uh, new syndicators also came into the market in the last few years. So properties that they got into, they turn around in two, three years. There were tremendous, tremendous uh, returns that they achieved. Uh, but the lending was tricky, right? So they got into some loans, which were maybe variable, bridge loans, uh, high loan to value. And when they have a high loan to value and the prices go down, that kind of creates that negative price mm -hmm. into the property. So that's what is happening. So, uh, you know, a lot of passive investors don't understand what's happening. And I like to simplify a little bit and tell them that when we say that cap rate is expanding, this is what is happening. The prices yeah. are trying, trying to adjust. And the the interest rates that you know whatever the floating interest rate that they have now they are demanding to have more interest coming in, and they also have something called a cap rate, which is that insurance kind of against that fluctuation, and the 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 cost of that insurance has also tremendously gone yes. up, right? Yeah. And that's why you are you are seeing drying out cash flow. So then, what is that alternative, right? So for me, that education is important. Telling them what is is happening. So does that mean multifamily is not a right asset class to invest? It's still the fundamentals of multifamily is still strong. Yeah. There is still that supply and demand imbalance. There's still, I mean, the residence is, is a need. It's not a want. 
the high occupancy levels that we have seen, it's still a strong, very strong asset class. It's just untesting right now, right? Yeah. So during that time, it's about education, telling them that what is happening if you are uh, going into new opportunity, what are the things that you should be careful about? So look at what is the lending, that financing part of it. And then you guys provide so much attention on the financing too, right? So going into right financing, it can make and break the deal. You guys know that, right? Yeah. So those are the kind of education that I'm trying to do by creating this passive uh, opportunities in different asset class, which has proven uh, either historically recession resistant or considering the mega trends. So why industrial, for example, right? So look at the trend. In last few years, we saw that COVID, there, is a lot, there was a surge of demand and the supply was limited of things. We were not getting things. So now the big companies started supplying and now with the recession, the consumer is like, is frozen. They don't want to purchase so much that they, they did in last two years. So they want to store these big things somewhere. Uh, there was the chip shortage. You know, there's a lot of inventory when it comes to household items, uh, washing machines, cars. You know, this inventory is just sitting around a lot, right? So that's one in reason why that demand is skyrocketed. And the second reason is that the manufacturing is coming back to us. So these are the trends that we are talking about. So the first thing is about uh, looking at what is happening in the, within the country and following the me mega trends and the trends that we want to invest in. And this is what we want to give as a pivot, a better option to our investors that, okay, now you can for some time look into some different asset classes. So you don't have that fear of investing because if you don't invest, your money is going to sit in the bank account eroding to inflation. So the risk managed capital preservation is the key. Look for something that you want to go in, you can go in and still create that compounding effect, that velocity of money that you are trying to do with, with your dollars. Yeah, no, beautifully said. And I love the way you explained it because, you know, there's there's so many mega trends that, uh, that investors need to pay attention to. Uh, and that that we can educate our passive investors that hey this is what is happening and exactly what you said, you know yeah. it is you you're seeing the trends uh, in person that's happening out there right like the Amazon effects, you know um, people are the self storage why it's going up because there is lots you know people are moving into apartments they can't afford homes so uh, they got to downsize sometimes and uh, put their stuff somewhere in cell storage, right? So, yeah. you know, um, uh, my, my question is, what are you the most excited about in the next uh, two to three years? Uh, wow, interesting. Uh, so for me, it's it's really, you know, the, that mission to impact more and more families. Uh, so education, as I said, that that's really truly my passion, right? Uh, so with that, I, I have also started a podcast, uh, Think Outside the Stocks, that's my podcast. Uh, and my purpose is not just that tunnel vision, right? A lot of people are focused on passive income and it's kind of a, creates a tunnel vision. It's good, at least you're thinking about passive income. So you are step step ahead from many, many of, uh, you know, people around you. But it's still a tunnel vision, the passive income, the financial freedom. I want to encourage people to look beyond that. So it's about, you know, growing, preserving, protecting and passing your wealth to the next generation. Yes. So it's about creating that holistic approach. Right. So my education uh, content that I'm planning on my podcast is about everything. It's about, you know, talking to these experts and, and especially I know that success leaves clues. Right. So these experts that I'm bringing in, I'm going to ask them that how do they think outside the stocks? How do they diversify, right? So uh, we know that a particular, um, you know, investor, a syndicator, for example, an active syndicator who's doing great uh, and invest into multifamily, but we don't know what, what are the other areas that he must be investing in and not just investing, but how is it protecting and passing his money to the next generation? So uh, the estate pl planning, the you know, uh, anything, this infinity banking strategy. Many people create like not just one vehicle, but like 10, 15 different policies so that they have this kind of compounding velocity of money going on. So I'm very excited about the journey of Think Outside the Stocks part podcast uh, to provide the information, the education that I have to people, many, many, again, I think that massive amount of value to massive amount of people and also learning from this guest because we're going to uncover together so many strategies that we have never heard about. Yeah, 
No, that's exactly it. So I agree. So for us too, the third one was one that we underestimated uh, just how much uh, learning and how much, how many friendships and, uh, you know, personal connections, uh, came through our podcast. It's been, it's been just the best ride ever. So I think you're, you're going to see that too. It, it brings so much <laughs> fulfillment in so many different ways. So, um, yeah. yeah, as we come to a wrap here, um, I just wanted to ask you one last question, which is, uh, right. we often ask our guests, is there sort of a quote or a saying that resonates with you or that, um, sort of, uh, embodies your life or your business that you'd be willing to share with us? Yeah, I uh, like I said, The Go-Giver has been a game changer for me. So that book, if you haven't uh, read that, yeah. that is a massive, yeah, massive paradigm shift. Book, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, for me, it just changed because see, when I started in this business and I came from that education pur- purpose, right? Uh, when I was educating, it was just growing fine. But when I had that first investment came in my life and I was like, I had to follow up. And go and ask for people again and again. And it felt like I'm a sellout, almost like a car salesman. And I did not like that. But Go Giver just completely shifted my focus. And it's about, uh, you know, it's not about, uh, you know, it's not about that investment. It's about what value are you trying to add to massive amount of people. Putting their interest first, serving them. So, so the purpose of serving is what is helping me. And like you said, that it's, it grows the connection. It is not just a transactional or business anymore. It grows that connection with your investors, with your partners. So for me, it's the growing as a community together. We have so much of power as a community. We have to remember that. And, you know, it's it's hard to see for me sometimes that when it comes to finances, we don't share our successes. We don't share our uh, failures. But as a community, if imagine what kind of community and success we will have if we share our successes and our failures and we learn from each other, right? Yeah. So that is one thought I will live behind that, you know, share it, share. I mean, you know, you guys are doing a great job with your podcast. If you hear an episode, if you hear the show, just share with your friends. It just takes a second. Share the knowledge, share with your community and let's grow together. When there is a high tide, we all rise together with the high tide. So remember that as a community, we have a strong, strong power. Yeah, I know. That's absolutely wonderful. So, um, Matthew, tell us, uh, we'll put it in our show notes as well. Um, if people want to reach out, uh, we'll link your podcast. Um, what are the other ways that uh, we'll, we'll link your website too? Is there any other ways that people uh, should reach out or any other places they can follow? Absolutely. So we have uh, thinkoutsidethestocks.com. That's my website. Uh, there is a lot of material there in terms of education. So you can download the passive investing guide. You can uh, go into a membership area. You know, we'll have uh, the syndicated and the infinite banking membership, two different memberships there, two different educations there. Uh, but, uh, you know, just get in touch with me. If you have any questions, just schedule a call with me. I uh, will be more than happy to answer your questions and help you out uh, and be that one family at a time to make that change in the world. That's Brilliant. amazing. So thank you again, Matthew, for taking the time out of your day and sharing your story and educating our listeners. Uh, it was a great episode. So thank you again for your time. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you so much. It's just such a pleasure. You I love to know more about you guys. And, you know, it feels like such a great connection we were talking some time back uh, about and you guys have tremendous story yourself. So thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be on your podcast. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.